been thinking of just doing VAs for acquisitions since they are most likely not looking to learn anything and leave you in the six to 12 months. I guess that's part of the business. Cody, what are your thoughts on that? I think having virtual assistants that start off with you in cold call and when they really start to understand the business and understand how your company makes money, moving them to that lead manager role and having them just tee up the opportunities for acquisitions people, they really have to really, really understand how the psychology and everything works and getting a, a seller under contract. So um, it definitely can happen. It, that's, you know, something that we've made work in our business, but that's something that, you know, you got to be patient with. The elevation, I guess you could say, is starting at cold caller. Once they're proficient, they're moving to lead manager. Once they're crushing it there, then seeing how you can move them into some of those opportunities to close the, the actual sellers and acquisition piece as well. Yeah, I, you know, it is something that we've believed in of like, let's just go uh, virtual assistant only and virtual assistants don't leave. Like we have virtual, like Mira, how long has Mira been with us? Like forever. And when will Mira leave us? Never. Yeah. Right. So yes, virtual assistants will never leave you. And you can actually build your business on like the backbone of that type of structure. And it is solid and amazing. But there is something to having an acquisition person here local to go on appointments and doing other things. And so for us, we kind of yep. just figured out it's a good hybrid to have. And you only figure that out based on your own personal resources, your personal desires, your personal office structure, all that kind of stuff. And so Alejandro, I hate to say this to you, but it's one of those things that you're going to have to figure out on your own of what you like. Cody, if we were going to hire an acquisition person, we would want them to be in Arizona. Is that correct? Yeah, 100%. And why is that? What have we learned about that? Most of the deals that we lock up are over the phone, but you know, we want to be able to have an Arizona acquisition person be able to go to a property if they need to. Because at the end of the day, it's like, I, I don't want to be going out there. Pace isn't you know going to be going out there. So we want to be able to have somebody that can go physically to the property if they need to. Not very often that we have to do that. But if a deal has to be pushed over the edge, it just makes it easier. I like it. I like it. Um, also, it's just better to have like the culture inside of our business. Here's a couple of things I want people to understand. We figured out our business model, right? We don't want to be somebody that has a hundred employees in our acquisition business. We're doing multiple deals weekly. We do deals in about 18 markets with creative finance. We only do cash deals in one market in Arizona. Our VAs obviously do lock up deals and they do that from the Philippines. We have virtual assistants from startvirtual.com that do have the ability to lock up contracts, but it is nice to just have acquisition people in your office. And so we're going back to that model of just having acquisition people in the office full time in Arizona.